Um, we actually have another question here as well. Um, and this was, was this intended to be a prototype for something that the MPCA is going to do in other watersheds? And what did the MPCA get out of it? Um, I guess my, my answer would be yes, it was, it was intended to be a, a prototype or a, a pilot of how it could be done and um, maybe some, some different options. I don't think it was necessarily the end-all, be-all, but um, Rebecca, do you, my, my understanding is that this has sort of evolved into some one of these wrap strategies. I'm not totally sure if that's correct, but... Yeah, um, this is Rebecca Flood with the PCA. Um, I, I, I think this has been a kind of a, a, a great experiment um, to, to try to help inform what are these watershed restoration and protection strategies going to look like moving forward. And I, I think all the work that they did um, it kind of helps inform us about, or will help inform us about, you know, how, how big of a slice are we going to, of, of area are we going to need? What, how do we um, do more focus and intention, intentional strategy development, that kind of thing. I, I don't, you know, I think our staff are, are still looking at it and trying to incorporate elements of what they did into um, what we're trying to develop now as a template. And, and I think, Beth, some of your comments about um, not everybody or every area had um, kind of some of the, the, the GPS LIDAR types of capabilities, that sort of thing. I think that information has helped inform us that maybe we need to take a little bit more um, of that work up front and set it out in the template for each individual watershed. So I, I think you've really helped us um, evolve our thinking about what we want um, kind of some models to look like and, and we're able, so we're able to pull uh, some of those ideas from what you've done. That's very good to hear. Yeah, I think it was really very uh, helpful to us um, uh, and, and really moved the ball forward as, as an example and a model. All right, I have another question here. Bill Majewski, uh, go ahead and ask your question. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm with the uh, St. Louis River AOC, which has a rep. And um, in listening so far, um, I'm a little bit disappointed in what kind of progress was made because I've been an advocate for watershed planning for many, many years. Um, I retired from planning about 10 years ago after about 40 years in land use planning. And uh, it seems like this is a, a common sense way to deal with planning uh, on a watershed basis. Um, it seems like um, because political boundaries uh, don't reflect uh, the boundaries of watersheds, you have uh, turf uh, issues that come into play very early on when you're trying to talk about this concept. And uh, I don't know how you overcome these other than if you've got a crisis to deal with in trying to solve some issue. Um, so I don't know if you can respond to that in terms of the response you lack of response you've had from what you've done so far or not. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely um, a, a challenge. I think that part of it could be overcome if at the state level, and it, and it sounds like this is maybe starting to happen, but, um, you know, if, if the funding for the local water plans and the services that come out of that was more um, done on the watershed basis, then I, I, I don't think it was so much, at least with the locals that we talked to, that... Um, that they wouldn't do things more on a watershed scale, but it was more that the current structure was set up that didn't really encourage that. Um, so I, I think it could be done. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we go back and forth over should there be a watershed district here, shouldn't there be? And um, at this time, we you know we probably don't have the political support for that, but who knows? Um, but yeah, it, it is. Um, Water not following county boundaries is a problem. 
If I could jump in on that too, I don't know if anyone is is online. This is Rebecca Flood again. I don't know if anyone is online um, from the Board of Water and Soil Resources, but in in the last legislative session, uh, they just got uh, a bill uh, that was passed, kind of uh, adopting uh, into statute a, kind of a one watershed, one plan, giving local units of government the option to you know, as just in, in the case here, different counties and, and different uh, political subdivisions to uh, work together to develop one watershed-based plan. So hopefully, you know, we'll be able to get there over time. Mm -hmm. Is that something that could uh, play into the continuing development of this plan to, to maybe pull some of those multiple counties and local governments together to, to really revise this and kind of merge it into that kind of grand plan that will everybody will follow? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think from our end, that's what we'd be looking at. And, and we did certainly, you know, we looked at and, and definitely incorporated stuff that, that is in the local water plans within this. Um, so they do, they do overlap or, or complement each other um, a lot too. But yeah, I would hope that um, within a couple of years, we're ready to really do a, a revision on this. That that process will be better established, uh, um, you know, from Bowser's end as far as how um, how those local plans or how the locals can adopt a watershed plan and such. Well, I, I was also wondering too uh, about one of the the things you touched on a little bit about some of the the more detailed data coming, but. How, how does it impact doing something like this with the, uh, the scheduling and kind of synchronization of the different plans of when they need to be put together and, and uh, when they're due, when different people are working on them? And did you run into that impacting your work? And is that something that would also need to be addressed? Yeah, I mean, I think we kept finding ourselves saying, well, we think these are priorities, but we're not totally sure. Um, you know, we knew there was a lot more data coming, and you know, I guess my hindsight and my and my suggestion to to other groups would be if you if you know you're in a similar situation, don't start this until that's done. Um, I mean, it, it it's definitely helpful and it gives us something to work with, sort of in between time. But it was a bit frustrating because we knew we didn't have all the pieces that we could have in a few you know in a little while longer. Um, but it just sort of worked out that way. So. This is Rebecca Flood. Um, I, just to add into that, too, I think that um, the, the Board of Water and Soil Resources and, and the PCA have worked together on a, on a pilot basis to take, you know, because they've got requirements that local water plans be updated uh, every uh, 10 years and, or you know, five-year updates and then a, a revision and a new plan submitted to the board uh, every 10 years. And we've tried to work with the Board of Water and Soil Resources in, in the Buffalo Red and, and that area to try to better synchronize um, our monitoring and assessment activities so that the data and information from that can feed into uh, the local water management plans. So that's, that's something that we're trying to work on that and kind of work out the kinks of that so that we can kind of hopefully move that more statewide. So that the plans and the plan development are better synchronized and that you're not, you know, always amending a plan based on, you know, this portion of the county uh, needs to update their water plan and not this portion of the, you know, another county and, and that kind of thing. So hopefully trying to move it toward that one watershed, one plan approach. And here's a question probably for Rebecca is do do you have any other plans for uh, doing some other uh, prototypes or maybe next uh, other watersheds to take on this approach? Um, you know we may, but um, if we do, I'm not aware of them right now. So um, some of our other staff may be more in touch with with that. All right. Well, any other questions out there? Oh, wait. We have another one. Uh, Bill Mayeski, go ahead again. 
Well, it, it just seems to me that uh, the presence of uh, monitoring data would be your beginning point and, and not something that you would introduce later on in the process. Because I, I think the whatever your, your monitoring data would show would give you the basis for some, some discussions, especially where you had problems. And where yeah. you don't have problems, then things are okay and they don't need a lot of attention. But in the problem areas, you would have a, a good platform for some attention from others. Yeah, and, and we certainly did have a fair amount of data. I mean, from when I look at it, I always want us to have more. Um, but I guess compared to some maybe some other parts of the state, we had more than than a lot of people did. So we certainly did base our our recommendations on on the data we had at the time. It was just kind of that we knew that there was more coming um, that might clarify or um, or change things a little. That, that's where it was a little bit tricky. Well, and Mr. Meisky, too, I would say that um, we, we knew that uh, the Cannon River Watershed Partnership had a, a lot of data in comparison to other portions of the state, and I think it also helped inform us that, you know, um, PCA's plans for monitoring and assess, assessing the 81 major watersheds, it, it helped us kind of reaffirm how much more data uh, we think is needed to do this kind of activity. And, but you're absolutely right. We do want to try to start off with the, the monitoring and assessment that helps inform our actions. Um, unfortunately, we can't do the entire state all at one time. So uh, again, one of the motivations for uh, working with uh, the partnership was, was to try to get a sense of uh, how do we develop these watershed restoration and protection strategies? What are what works, what doesn't work, and how can we use that information to, to move our, our uh, other projects forward. And just grateful that um, the partnership was willing to take this on. All right. Thanks, Ed. Um, I was also wondering, too, is, um, you know, the, and this, Bill's question kind of sparked this a little bit was that this is really is seems to be focusing a lot on the problems. Is there a, a component of uh, prevention or looking at the, the the waters that are clean currently and incorporating into the plan how to keep them clean? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. It, within, um, mm, I think one of the things we had within the low section was to talk about um, a sort of a green corridor area and, and enhancing some of the natural um, areas that, that are still there. Um, quite honestly, within our watershed, there isn't much that is, um, there, there are a few lakes that are not on the impaired waters list. And we did list that one of them, those are in the upper cannon section. Uh, and I think those were listed as protection priority areas. Um, but beyond that, um, we don't have a lot of water that is not impaired. This is Rebecca Flood again. Let me just add, too, to what Beth was saying, is that it is certainly our intention, Daryl, to um, have, have these be watershed restoration if the water bodies are impaired and don't meet water quality standards or protection uh, strategies and plans so that so that where we have water bodies that do meet standards that we maintain uh, at least maintain or improve uh, enhance those water bodies and, and provide uh, protection strategies and, and plans for that so that's kind of why we've transitioned from calling things just TMDLs or total maximum daily loads to these watershed restoration and protection strategies because we know that not every water body and in every watershed is going to be impaired and that we do want to uh, focus on protection activities as well. All right, thank you. Do we have any other questions? All right, well, 
seems like uh, we don't. So um, I don't know, maybe if uh, uh, Beth or Rebecca, if either of you have any closing comments. Um, but before that, I'll say we will uh, send a follow-up uh, short little survey about the webinar. And one thing to think about is uh, any suggested future topics uh, to cover. We'd love to hear back from you. And thank you for joining us today. And uh, Rebecca or Beth, do you have any closing thoughts? Um, I guess just thank you very much for your interest, everybody. And, and if you have questions that come up later or you decide to actually um, take a look through the document and want to know more, feel free to contact us. All right, thank you. And Beth, uh, uh, there was a question earlier about whether the uh, PowerPoint itself would be available. Uh, do you have that available anywhere, or would you be all right with emailing um, sure. it? Sure, I can. Would it be easier if I send it to you, Daryl, or what? I don't yeah, have I can it. go ahead. Yeah, I can go ahead and email it out to the any of the attendees. Sure. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Thank you. Ready. All right. Well. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. And uh, look forward to uh, uh, coming webinars. Thanks. Thanks, Gerald. Bye.